Hey learners, what's up? I'm your host Abhay and you are watching Learners Vlog. So friends, in this video, you guys will learn about the basic components required in order to make your own quad copter. So if you are planning to make a quad copter, then watch this video till the end. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, then don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the red subscribe button and also press the bell icon in order to grab all the latest updates from Learners Vlog. So first thing that you require to make a quadcopter is its outer body or frame on which each and every component can be installed. You can make a quadcopter frame with four arms at home by using light materials such as wood, aluminium etc or you can buy a frame from e-commerce sites such as Amazon, Flipkart or from the stores near to your house. The frame which are available on both the sources are made up of different materials such as carbon fiber, titanium, aluminium, fiberglass, steel etc. The best suitable material for your quadcopter frame is carbon fiber as it is very light with low density and high tensile strength but at the same time it is very costly. And you can also choose plastic one as in my case and it costs nearly between 1000 to 850 Indian rupees whereas carbon fiber frames are starting from 2000 Indian rupees and above. And the second thing required is brushless motors. In case of quadcopter, you require one motor for each arm and total of four brushless motors. And these brushless motors are also called as outrunners because in this type of motors, rotating part is on the outside of the motor. And because of this layout, this type of motor can generate much more torque. Higher torque is required for quadcopter since we balance by changing the revolution of the motor. Higher your torque, the faster you can change the speed of your propellers and you don't need a gearbox and saves a lot of mass. And by using this type of motor, you can achieve more than 3 ratio 1 power to weight ratio on a 50 gram airframe. And suppose your motor has a power to weight ratio of 5, then it means it can lift 5 times more than its original weight. And now let's talk about the numbering of the motors. For example, in my case, it is A22 12 slash 13 T 1000 kV. So here 22 means motor or rotor diameter, 12 means motor or rotor height, 13 means number of wire turns around each pole inside the motor and 1000 means revolution per volt. And the formula for the number of rotations per minute given by the motor is RPM equal to kV into voltage. And for example, if you have a 1000 kV motor and you supply that motor with 5 voltage supply, then it produces 5000 rotations per minute in no load condition. Next important thing in quadcopter build is propeller. In case of a quad, you need 4 propellers. A propeller is a type of fan that transmits power by converting rotational motion into thrust. It is mainly made up of plastic or carbon fiber material. They look simple but they are very important as without it your quad will not fly. In case of quadcopter, 4 propellers work together to produce thrust that lifts the quad off the ground. By changing the amount of thrust of each propeller, a quadcopter can move forward, backward, side to side or can rotate. And now let's see what does the numbers on the propellers denote. This type of numbers are written on the propellers. For example, in my case, it is 10 into 4.5, which means propeller has a diameter of 10 and it has a pitch of 4.5. Here diameter means the distance from tip to tip of a propeller and pitch means how far a propeller will move a quadcopter in ideal condition during one revolution. In my case, I have propeller of pitch 4.5, it means it will move the quadcopter 4.5 inches forward for every revolution it turns. And the next thing is electronic speed controller or ESCs. ESCs basically convert the PWM signal from the flight controller or radio receiver and derives the brushless motors by providing the appropriate level of electric power. One end of ESC is connected to the battery and the flight controller and the other end is connected to the brushless motors. In my case, I have Simon K30 Ampere ESCs and I always prefer you to buy pre-flash ESCs because flashing ESC is a very complicated task and always buy ESC which have inbuilt battery eliminator circuit and the function of battery eliminator circuit is to convert mainly poor battery voltage of 11.1 volt to the 5 volt constant voltage which is then fed to the flight controller and always make sure that you buy an ESC which is at least 20% larger than the current your motor pulls. So if 
For example, your motor is pulling 20 ampere current, then your ESC should be at least 24 ampere or it can be more. And the next important component is the flight controller, which is also called as the brain of the quadcopter. There are a variety of flight controllers out there in the market, for example, Hobby King, KK2.1 Multi Rotor Flight Controller, NAZ32, Open Flight CC3D, etc. The basic function of the flight controller is to direct the RPM of each motor in response to the input. A command from the pilot for the multi rotor to move forward is fed into the flight controller, which determines how to manipulate the motor accordingly. And in my case, I have Open Flight CC3D flight controller. And the next components are transmitter and receiver. Transmitter is basically a device by which one can control the working of a quadcopter and receiver basically receive the signal from the transmitter and then send it to the flight controller in order to control the motors. I always recommend you to buy 6 channel transmitter and receiver so that you have 2 channels extra for doing separate things, for example in order to operate LEDs etc. There are many transmitters and receivers out there in the market and I have Flysky FS CT6B transmitter and receiver. And the last component required is battery and its charger. In this we use LiPo battery or lithium polymer battery in quadcopter build. I recommend you guys to use 3S LiPo batteries or 4S as it will provide sufficient voltage to run your quadcopter. 3S battery means which have 3 cells in series and it will provide voltage of 11.1 volt and whereas 4S battery will provide voltage of 14.8 volt. And you also need a charger to charge your LiPo battery and in my case I have B3 Pro compact charger for charging it. Friends this was the video in which I have explained the components required in order to make your own quadcopter. Friends how do you like our video comment down below and let us know about your experience with us and don't forget to subscribe and give thumbs up as it will motivate me to make such videos for you lovely guys out there in future. Till the next video bye bye.